All right, campers, in this video, we're going to work with classes and ADO.net, um, building on a video that we did earlier in the series where we just did some straight ADO.net from the client directly against the database, which you could call that two-tier development and not a good idea ultimately, but that was just to convey the point of, uh, of that. So now what we're gonna do is, um, we're going to do it in, in what we call three-tier architecture, in-tier architecture, user tier, business tier, data tier. Use ADO.net as a data access layer and uh, and do do some things. So we're just going to come out here right now and just do a select on the dog table to see. And this is, of course, in the SSMS program, the SQL Server Management Studio, that we have some dog ID, dog name, and a few records. So now from scratch, we're going to start off by recreating what we did in an earlier lesson where I'm going to uh, create a new project and we're going to make this just a uh, an ASP.NET web application just on based on the .NET framework we're going to get into .NET Core and Blazor and all those cool things later on this year I'm just going to put that in temp and create this and just empty and let's go okay so the first thing I'm going to do is close what they want me to see right click on the project let's add a new item let's just give ourselves a default page a web form I'm going to grab myself a grid view control one of the pretty standard there it is, grid view, and double click on it. Put that in the page there. And then I'm going to right click and go to view code. And I'm going to just paste in what we did in one of the earlier lessons, this bit of code here. To do this more appropriately, like I said, we wouldn't be just two tier in it, where this kind of thing, connection strings, and what we're doing would be in our client. We would go through an intermediary, we would go through a class library. Um, that would act as our business tier and data access layer to then uh, connect and work with our underlying database. So you could have multiple clients all wanting to interact. You wouldn't have this kind of text in every one of those clients. That would be ridiculous. So we're going to create ourselves a class library. I'm going to open a, create a new project. And here I'm going to just get a .NET Framework class library going. Now that we've got it, I'm actually going to close it. And then over here back in our stc.web.app solution that has our stc.web.app project, I'm going to right click on the solution and say add existing project. And you could have done add new project there. And then I'm going to go where I created it to the class library. And you'll have to go in to get the csproj file double click it and there so now the class library along with the web app is part of the overall solution the web app is bold which means it is the startup project all right but we've got one more thing to do to wire it together and that is for the web app that wants to use and reference reference and use the class library you've got to actually establish that so if I expand my references and then right click reference add reference you'll see one of the choices is projects there it is just check the box and not only is the class library in the same project as my solution, but now I have a reference to it from within my web application. Okay, so let's come up here to this class one by default that it threw up there. Let's rename this guy. Let's just name it dog. So we now have a class named dog and let's do a couple of things. First, just for kicks, let's do this. Let's say, um, public string select word okay so we've got ourselves a little function in there it returns a string value just gonna return that no big deal but now let's hook to it from our client so we're back here on our web page and while we st it can still do the grid thing, we don't care. We 
while we could do that, and it'd help if I typed, that would just write at the top line above the grid DDD. But we don't want to do that. We want to go to the class library to call a function. Okay, so we have to do one more thing here to wire this page specifically to that class library. And let's give ourselves a using on it just to make it easier. You'll see it shows up there and we can now use it and it stays grayed out until you actually make use of it. So then instead of this DDD, let's do this. Let's look at that. We type dog. It's even green. It says, hey, I know what you're talking about. You can see over here, class stc.class.liber.dog. It knows what we're talking about. So there I instantiate a dog object. Instead of writing that text, since we're going to call that function that returns text, we'll just say, and see it popped up right there with IntelliSense, my dog.select word. Easy peasy. So now we run this and we should get whatever garbage characters I put in there. I think it was a bunch of cues that show up at the top of the page. And there they are. Okay, so now let's close that and let's take, uh, we don't need that anymore. Let's take this code that we had in the client and put it where it belongs more appropriately in the business tier of the class library. And let's start by repurposing this to be like dog list. So this data set, now we've got the squiggle because it doesn't know what we're talking about. So we'll system.data namespace, it's got it. Now it's still got the red squiggle because we haven't returned anything yet. So let's just return the DST. That'll be the easiest thing. Squiggle goes away. We've got our code. And then let's come back and look at this. Um, so we've instantiated our dog class, but our data source is not going to be explicitly that anymore. So what would we do here? We would, and you see it pops right up, right? And you combine that directly to the data source, and this should give us our grid of dogs. Okay, so now let's say we want to insert a dog. We want to add a dog to that grid. All right, so let's start off by we'll come over here to the default page and um, we're going to give ourselves a text box. Not under data, it's under standard. Text box, text box. Okay, and then let's give ourselves a button. All right, so text box one, button one, and then we want to get to the code behind the button. Sometimes it's easy just to go to the design view and double click the thing and it'll go ahead and give you your signature over in code. And so what we want to do is take whatever's typed in text one and add that to the, um, to the grid. Start off by instantiating ourselves a dog object. So now what we want to do is we want to set the properties of the dog. So, well, let, let's do it more simply first and just pass the string. So we'll come over to our, uh, our dog class in the other project and let's just do this. Okay, so this is the function that we'll use to actually insert the dog record. So come back to here and then what we'll do is we'll just pass along the string. Let's keep it really simple for now. And then we'll just get it from that text box. So we're just passing that along. We're not setting um, a variable to it or anything like that uh, over here in this class. Um, well, there, I'm, it looks like I'm going to return a string. And you could return error code, success, um, whatever, the dog object. But I'm just going to keep it simple and not return anything for now. So I'll be passed in the dog name, and I want to insert it. So what would I do? Well, let's start off with this. And obviously, we wouldn't just have this duplicate code all over the place. We would have common connection objects and that sort of thing. But for the purpose of this, let's just go with it. All right, so we no longer are going to select. We're going to insert. 
So that's what I just paste in. Insert into, and it's not case sensitive, insert into dog and then values dog ID and dog name. A dog ID is just the arbitrary unique identifier of a record, never have it where it has meaning in it. Um, and add with value isn't great, but we're just going to use it for this. It's simple. And so you see dog ID, I'm just creating myself a new GUID. Unique identifier and dog name, it's going to be that that's passed in from the calling client. So it'll pass that in, have the parameters, insert into dog, dog value. And obviously we don't need a data set anymore because we're not getting, we, we're not going to return records. We don't need this adapter at all anymore because that's the hose to connect the command object to a data set um, to fill it, um, to fill a table in the data set. And we're not going to be returning anything, so we don't need that anymore. What we need is uh, our command execute. You can execute scalar to return a single value. There are other things. We're just going to execute non-query because we're going to pass this on, do it, and we don't want anything back. And even though this isn't the way we do it um, in the big leagues for this, I'm just going to open and close my connection explicitly right here. And let's see, I don't need those guys. I may as well get rid of them. So there it is, connection, command. There's my insert, my parameters passed in. Uh, connection and runs and let's run the thing and see what happens. All right, new dog name. Why not? Hit the button, refresh the screen, there's Fluffy. Okay, but let's say that we didn't want to just pass in a dog name. Let's say there were, you know, 10 or 20 attributes of the dog that the client needed to fill out to then pass along to this um, inserting function. Well, you could, of course, have all of those listed here, but let's say at the client we want to actually work with the dog object and then just pass the dog object that already has all of its um, type save attributes already um, attached. So let's come up here and inside our class, let's create properties for our dog. Now we'll keep it simple. For now, we're just going to have our ID and our name, but you can imagine 10 or 20 attributes of a dog. Um, so there's how we set that up, nice and simple. And yes, what I'm hinting at is when it comes time and when we get into the Entity Framework stuff, this stuff you don't have to do. This is the plumbing that while it's pretty straightforward and you can do it when you're trying to do it for a lot of entities, a lot of attributes, it can be a lot of plumbing. And this is the kind of thing that ORMs like Entity Framework can take care of uh, for you. But for now, let's just list these. And let's change this now where if someone wants to insert a dog, we're not gonna pass the dog name. Let's say there are other attributes too. Um, not that the, the GUID, the ID is something that a client would create, but let's just go with it. All right, when they're going to actually pass the dog object. And it might be where they have most of the attributes, but then there's some things like um, audit attributes, like created by, modified by kind of things that we can do in the, in the business or data tier. Let's come back to this. So no longer are we going to use this text box and just pass it. We're going to actually pass the dog object. So we're going to pass my dog. But before we do, we need to set the properties of my dog, which we now have access to. All right, so that's how that works. And then coming back here, just making sure we're buttoned up. Let's run that. Oh wait, I hard coded the name Fido in instead of whatever. I hard coded Fido in instead of grabbing whatever the user typed in the text box. So whatever. So I don't have to type anything and I'll just hit the button and refresh the page and we'll see Fido.